Jen from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so happy you are joining me tonight. I have some fun projects to share with you. We are going to make some things with the new Trusty Tools bundle and the coordinating designer paper in celebration. I love coordination and we've got a lot of that in our celebration brochure this year. If you're not familiar with celebration, it is Stampin' Up's annual promotion where you get free gifts when you shop. So for every $50 or $100, you can choose a free gift. And um, we have some brand new items that Stampin' Up just added today. We are right smack dab in the middle of celebration. And in addition to the brochure, today Stampin' Up! announced some additional items. We've got so much more to celebrate. <laughs> there are eight additional items that are available when you purchase $50 or more, and two when you purchase $100 or more. Oh my gosh, I just went to get a squeeze of lotion and I put way too much on there. Let's see if I can get this <laughs> on my arms a little bit. Um, so excited about these new options. So the new options are current products from Stampin' Up! that you can get for free now. So there's two stamp sets from the annual catalog, two kits from the kit collections, two designer papers, the delightfully eclectic paper. Isn't that one a double paperback? And then also the new Just Kidding designer paper. We've got some embossing folders, the Sweet Thoughts cards and envelopes, and a whole set of the new core color markers um, as a level two gift. Also the Dragonfly Punch. I'm so excited about these. Tell me which one is your favorite, which you're most excited to get. Honestly, I was really happy to get that delightfully eclectic paper. I'm kind of running low on that. So I ordered today and I got that. I also got both of these stamp sets beside me and botanical layers. I kind of been eyeing them. And so um, I'm excited to be able to get those. Um, and then the kits are always a fun addition. In addition to these new celebration products, we've got two new kits that started today. Um, and those are, let's see, I ordered them. Oh, there's a birthday kit that has some gold. And then also a, um, a home decor kit that's the house planets. I'm really excited about that. Four different square frames. Um, so I will have a chance to show you those next week um, because my order should be here by then. And if you're a demonstrator, we got to pre-order new online exclusives. These are things that are coming out in March, uh, March fifth to be exact if you're not a demonstrator yet. Um, but if you are a demonstrator, you can find all the new online exclusives that you can order on the demonstrator view of the website. Go under shop products, online exclusives. And if you're thinking about joining as a demonstrator, you can actually get those new online exclusives in your starter kit. So I'm really excited about that. There are two new suites, the Zinnias and also a latte, a coffee suite. Um, and then some new bundles and new stamps, um, new paper, ribbon, embellishments. I always love new product. It's one of my favorite things about being a demonstrator is getting a chance to order early. Um, okay, so I, um, right before I came on, I was in the car. I had to take Anna to her archery practice. Elise has a basketball game. Thomas has a class. And so I had to drive her. And one of the things that I'm so thankful for in the winter, even though tonight it was a nice day today, but um, I was thinking about it on the way home, how much I love my seat warmers. And so my question for you tonight is if you could have anything in your craft room, like if money is no object, what would you, what luxury would you add to your craft room? And I think I would have a seat warmer. <laughs> I think it'd be so cozy to sit and stamp with a warm tushy. Um, and especially coming from the, the car, I'm really thinking that sounds lovely. All right, I thought I had these sorted, but it looks like I've got a duplicate. That must be the only duplicate. Let's take a look at this paper. This is the um, from Celebration. The trusty toolbox designer paper. It's a 12 by 12 designer paper, and um it has 
two each of six different designs. Um, I love these papers that have images that you can cut and use. So we've got two different um, sheets that have tools that can either be die cut with the coordinating dies or fussy cut. Um, and so I just love it. You can make a whole bunch of cards. Just get all these cut out ahead of time and you'll be making all kinds of cards. Um, and then we have some other, well, these have other sides. Let me show you. <laughs> the B patterns are, are pretty nice. The grid paper and then um, sort of just a almost a brush stroke, really um, subtle brush stroke. Then we've got some simple patterns here with hammers and screwdrivers and the screws and nuts and bolts and a ruler. This is fun. And on the other side, sort of like a pegboard. This I thought was really interesting. I didn't think of it until I was looking at the samples in the catalog and they've got it on this card where they make a toolbox out of it. And so it doesn't have to be, but it could be a toolbox with the drawers. And so then they've got the drawers that are kind of on stamp and dimensional. So you can kind of layer that over it. I thought that was a really clever, um, clever use of the designer paper. Um, did we cover all the sides? Anyway, lots of fun things. I really love the colors here. We've got um, basic black, of course, copper clay, crushed curry, gray granite, lost lagoon, and poppy parade. I just realized I think I got out real red for my toolbox. Well, I want to do some casing. You, I love to case the catalog. You guys know that. And so today I want to copy the samples that are right here on page 56 in the January through April 2024 Stampin' Up! mini catalog. And um, and so right there on page 56. And I just thought this was a, such a great collection of projects that really showcased the sweet or the not the sweet the bundle so beautifully um, we have the combination of die cuts and also stamp images and I'm going to also incorporate the designer paper um, into these projects as well now um, I talked about this tool a couple weeks ago that is available for everyone um, and that is the project supply list I've got it linked up in the video description again this is such an awesome tool that Stampin' Up! puts together for us um, it is a document with literally a hundred pages and the full size page looks like this so there's two projects on every page it's a picture of the project and then also details about making it so the first project we're gonna make is this little box right here and so I looked at page 56 and there's a picture of it. And sometimes there are details um, about how to create something or measurements, not always, but sometimes. Um, and this one did have the box paper size. It says five and three eighths inch by three and a half inches and score at one inch on all sides. So I love that they included that information, which makes copying this project even easier. So I've, I've, prepared a few things ahead of time. I die cut some pieces from the detailed die cuts in this trusty tool, trusty tools bundle. And, um, and so there is a, a die here for the base of the toolbox. And then also there is um, a handle, which is what I used for this. Gosh, so many great dies in here. We're going to use them on some other projects, but we've got the pegboard. We've got the um, images for the, or the dies for the stamp images, the pencil, the hammer, the wrench, the paintbrush. There's also detailed dies for a drill and pliers and a um, measuring tape. Um, so many fun things. So let's start first with our toolbox and then we're going to add some tools to it and make a tag. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Oh, I'm loving your comments. Uh, yes, a dedicated room for crafting. I mean, I feel like that's the must right there, right? Storage unit, good idea, Bonnie. Um, I saw someone say an electric die cutting machine. I would love that. That would be awesome. Um, yes, extra space, storage. I think we're all on the same page. <laughs> Here I am talking about warm in my tushy and you guys are being so much more practical. Thank you for grounding me a little bit. <laughs> I'm really like my space is not huge but I do have a dedicated craft space um, and some decent storage although I also just have uh, my own organization system on the floor. <laughs> um, okay I'm loving your comments keep them coming. Uh, thank you so much for 
chatting tonight. I'm so glad you guys are all here. All right, so let's make this box. We've got um, the measurements, like I said, from the paper. This is five and three eighths inch by three and a half. And I am going to fold this up. This is just kind of like a standard box bottom. And so I'm going to cut on opposite sides on the score lines up to the perpendicular score line. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. And you can use liquid glue for this. I like tear and tape because I always make a mess with the, um, <laughs> I always make a mess with the liquid glue. So tear and tape is a good option for me, but um, the liquid glue works well too. So you're going to put um, adhesive on all four corners of your box. And then we're going to assemble this. And you can make this any size. This size specifically um, are the measurements from the paper. And I'm going with them because um, they are designed for the toolbox. So it, it's going to fit there perfectly. But if you have a special um, gift that you are, you know, trying to make a box for, you can do the same kind of thing and make a custom box for whatever it is that you need. Um, all right, so I'm going to just kind of fold that tear and tape up because it was a little bit long and we're going to fold each of these ends um, to the side like this. So we're going to do that on all four corners. And this is kind of a simple box. Now in the sample in the catalog, they showed putting some, um, I think it looks like a bag of nuts or trail mix. Um, and so I would love to know what you would put inside um, a little toolbox gift box, a little treat box here. Um, oh, chocolate's always a good option. I think it would be a cute little thing to package up a gift card, like if you did a gift card to a home improvement store, um, and then you could package up something else um, with it or just the gift card itself. Um, it would be kind of fun in there. So this is gonna go on the inside again, that little flap. And we are going to finish that off. So here's our simple box. And now we're just going to do the decorations. So I die cut um, the toolbox pieces for both sides of the box. I don't know in the sample, it kind of almost looks like there's only one handle on here. Maybe they only have it on the front, but I feel like it's incomplete if you only do the front. So I'm going to do um, both sides. And also on the sample, it looks like there are lines. And I actually thought when I looked at this that um, it was part of the die cut and it's not. I think that they drew those lines on with a marker, um, but I kind of like the lines. So I want to have a similar look on my project. Um, so I'm going to get out my grid paper. And let's see here. Um, oh. I'm going to use my a straight edge. We'll use that and a marker. I'm going to get out my regal markers and use real red, which is the same color as the cardstock. And um, just a reminder, those markers you can get for free are the new core colors. So those are going to be like the Misty Moonlight, the Lemon Lime Twist, Pretty Peacock, Berry Burst, Lemon Lolly, all the colors that came back um, when we did their, our, color, our color changeover. Okay, the lines on the original are right in the middle of the dots. And so I'm lining up with the grid line to be in the middle. And then I'll use my ruler and actually want to use the other end. Okay. There we go. Our nice new bullet end. I definitely want a straight line. A lot of times I do projects like this and I just do wavy or you know like I freehand the lines but that is not going to work on the toolbox so I'm just going right up against the straight edge trying to just do a, a straight line across but the grid paper is so perfect for this because you can kind of line up the line where you want it to go and then use the ruler 
or this straight edge. So just a kind of a subtle little detail, but I like it. Let's go ahead and do that to the other side. We're doing the same thing. I'm just going to line up the grid lines in between the dots. Um, okay, so I'm using a Stampin' Write marker, which is the, um, the sort of water-based dye ink. Um, we also have the Stampin' Blend markers, which are the alcohol markers, and you could use that for this technique too. Um, I think you could, you could go either way. Um, but I'm curious to know um, if you use the Stampin' Write markers or if you mostly use the Stampin' Blend markers. So leave a comment and let me know, do you like water-based markers or alcohol-based markers for your paper crafting projects? I definitely, I would say use the blends more than the Stampin' Write markers, although there are some fun techniques that you can do um, with Stampin' Write markers. And so next week I will share a fun marker technique and using um, that new core color marker combination to show that off a little bit. So, um, all right, I've got my marker lines on there and I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I think before I do that, I want to glue the, um, glue the handles on. So I'm going to do a dot of liquid glue on each end and then attach interesting that my dot of glue <laughs> is right where the hole is um I was just thinking it would be cute to add like one of the um like one of the um die cuts screws or something like that to cut to kind of cover cover that up a little. You could also use a glue dot here. Oh my gosh, I just wiped all the glue right off. Mixed review on the markers. I think it sounds like most of you are using the blends. Um, Sharon says watercolor pens and or water pens in the ink pads. Um, yeah, they're totally different looks and I think it really depends on your stamps too as to whether or not you're doing more of a watercolor look than a, the Stampin' Blends. Um, in fact, I was thinking about that new, it's not new, it's new to the Celebration offering, the Beside Me stamp set and I was thinking about how I would color that because Stampin' Blends seem maybe a little too solid, like a little too um, kind of um, opaque for the sketchy style. So I might try to do a little water coloring. Okay. It will dry clear. You're right, Fonda. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to add these to the box now. And, um, because I'm sticky now, I'm going to stick with that tear and tape to add, um, to add the Add the sides of the toolbox. Isn't this fun? Oh, I just love it. It's so cute. I, I think I asked you guys, but maybe I missed your comments. I'll have to scroll back up and see. Um, did you think of some things that you would put inside the box besides nuts or candy? <laughs> um, I'm gonna scroll up and see really quick while I'm putting this together. Yes, chocolates, gift card. I think that's a great idea. If you think of anything else, then uh, leave a comment. I think this would be a fun little treat box for uh, maybe like a retirement party or something like that. Um, if you have somebody that is handy or whose job um, involves tools, I think it'd be kind of Kind of a fun, fun thing. The sentiments in this stamp set are um, Happy Father's Day, thank you, and you're the most awesome. 
And what I love about the font here is that it coordinates really well with that, um, the new alphabet die. And so you could easily customize, um, where's the alphabet die? Right here, it's page 47. It's the same font as the alphabet die here. Um, and so you can customize and use a name or, um, or something like that. So if you wanted to say, um, oh, now where did the tools go? <laughs> there, okay. Alphabet page 47. Um, if you wanted to say mom or grandpa or pop pop or um, your brother's name or your uncle's name or your boss's name or whatever, <laughs> um, I think that's kind of a fun, a fun way to customize it and it goes really well with the font. Okay, well there is the toolbox part. Um, and the other thing that was in the catalog, oh, it's right in front of me. I'm like looking for the catalog to show you the sample, um, are the tools. And so I think we should stamp some of these tools. Um, so we are going to do the paintbrush, the pencils. I love these two-step stamps. And we'll also do the, um, the wrench. Okay, so let's get our stamps out here. Most of these I haven't used yet. In fact, the only thing that I created with this so far were these fun little gift boxes. Do you remember this video? This was part of the 12 Days of Christmas um, video, and I used the small box here to create the base of the box here and just wrapped designer paper around it. So the designer paper piece is six inches by 12 inches, and I just wrapped it around the box to create the larger gift bag. Isn't that fun? I love it. Okay, so we are going to get some of these stamps out here. And um, oh, the paintbrush especially is one of my favorites because my husband works for Sherwin-Williams Paint Company. And so <laughs> um, he doesn't, he paints like at our house, but he's in, he's like in sales. So he doesn't, he doesn't paint for his job, but um the paintbrush is still very iconic. We're just talking about that today. He has been working for Sherwin-Williams for 25 years this summer. Isn't that incredible? I think that is um, not as common as it used to be to stay with the same job for so long. Um, let's get the wrench out too. And you notice I've got several different stamps for each of these because these are two step stamps, um, which I just love, where's the pencil? Oh yeah, the pencil. Um, two step stamps, which mean there's an outline stamp and then there's a solid stamp for the inside. And you'll see when I, um, when I start putting these together. So let's get out our piece of cardstock and um, I, I should have prepared a little more, I'm sorry. <laughs> we are going to cut some smaller pieces that we can send through our die cutting machine. We'll get Lucy out for this small job. Okay, I wanna use colors that are in the, um, in the designer paper. So we are going to use some of the um, red. Lost Lagoon, Crushed Curry, and um, what is this other color? Is that Copper Clay? I think so. Copper Clay. Oops, just dropped it. Okay, let's start with the uh, Memento ink for the outline. And then we are going to do here is the handle. Let's do this one in the Lost Lagoon. Is this the right one? No, that was the hammer. <laughs> I thought it's too short. 
let's try again. It doesn't look terrible, but there is one that is meant to fit it. And we're gonna use that one. Oh, Diane used to work for Shrimes. That's so fun. Now I have to know what did you do? What did you do? Did you just work in a store? Were you in the sales field? Um, I don't know if the stores still have them, um, but they used to have interior designers um, that would that would work with the um, like th there would be some in the store that would help with. Well, I know my husband's the store he used to work at a long time ago um, used to have like wallpaper and the, you know the whole thing. So it was more than just paint. Um, what's next? Our paintbrush. Let's do our paintbrush. This is really fun because there are two different things to color here. Um, okay, I think there's gonna be room. Um, there is the handle, and then there's also a little stamp where you can add color to the brush, and I thought that was so fun. So we are going to do, um, let's see. Hmm. I want to do red, but we already have the red toolbox. So let's do the um, copper clay for the handle, and then we'll add some yellow paint. Two-step stamps. Gosh, I just love these. Isn't that fun? You could do a whole bunch of paint brushes in different colors. Um, I remember a technique we used to do back in the day where we would get those paint samples, those paint strips, and we would stamp on them. And then there was a whole like faux paint strip thing where people would do colors and make it look like a, a paint sample strip. Um, Oh my gosh, we had all kinds of techniques back in the day, didn't we? <laughs> I have been a demonstrator for um, 20, it'll be 22 years um, this year. Isn't that crazy? And so I, um, I have been doing this almost as long as my husband has been um, working for Sherwin-Williams which is both of them longer than we have been parents. I'm gonna add the the pencil. Now the whole thing is solid yellow, but I mean, I feel like we need to make those erasers pink, don't you? <laughs> Let's get out our, um, I'm gonna get out also, my gray stamp and blend because I want to color the um I want to color the wrench and there's a dark one let's see pink that's what we were looking for okay I'm gonna do a dark flirty flamingo here for the eraser isn't that an eraser I think so it kind of looks like a um <laughs> A school pencil now. Um, let's do some light smoky slate. So we are going to kind of um, do the two step, but also add some color with the stamp and blend. So we're going to kind of do both. You could color the entire image with stamp and blends. That works too. Um, but I love the option to do the two tone or the two step stamping. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of the gray on the paintbrush because that's, um, paintbrushes usually have that like metal strip there, right? Um, oh, I love it. Um, I, I think I missed a comment, Cindy. Oh, I made a card with a stamp set from 2003. Oh my gosh, kind of iconic. That is an old, that's what, 20, 21 years old, 2003. Um, 
I love it. Was it also the Atul stamp set that you were using? I've seen some fun cards with the paintbrush and the colors. Let's do our die cuts and die cut these pieces here. I'm using my little mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And if you don't have a die cutting machine, Celebration is such a great time um, to get one because it um, you get extra freebies when you shop during Celebration, right? You get your, um, your free gifts and you can choose either this designer paper or a different designer paper or a different stamp set. Um, and you also... Um, have the new options that just started today. Um, so it's a great time to not only stock up, but also to get some of the bigger things like a die cutting machine or a big thing of the markers. Uh, it's also a great time if you haven't already to stock up on your favorite in color reinkers and cardstock because we know that those are all going to go away soon. Um, the um, the in colors that will be retiring this spring are the um, parakeet party and the sweet sorbet and the starry sky and orchid oasis. Oh my gosh, um, I keep forgetting about the fact that they're going to end soon and I'm not ready to say goodbye to those. Look, I love, they just pop, don't they? And my goodness, they look so similar to the designer paper. I mean, holy cow. <laughs> I think besides the gray bear, I could have colored that a little different. It, it almost looks exactly the same. So you can use the same dies to die cut images from the um, designer paper, so the paintbrush, the hammer, um, the pencil, the wrench, one of the things that, or several of the things, the saw and the, um, the, what is, the vise, is that what that is? Um, and the shears and the level and the saw, some of these things don't have coordinating dies, uh, but some of them do. And so the ones that look the same as the stamp images, you can um, go ahead and die cut those using the dies. Um, we had our team stamp and share last month and Amanda was talking about how she just sat at the couch and just cut all the tools um, from the designer paper and just cut them, like just fussy cut them all. And I thought that was such a great idea to just sit and get them all cut out for you. Um, and oh my gosh, fun fact, we were talking about Sherwin-Williams. That is actually how I met Amanda, was through my husband. Um, <laughs> he was at a lunch with um, a customer and Amanda was there and he was talking about Stampin' Up! And she said, I know Stampin' Up! And so he told her about my page and um, she reached out and um, now she's part of my team. It's so exciting. Um, this was a, a few years ago now. It's been a while, but um, I just thought that was kind of... Um, Kind of a fun, fun way to meet another stamper. All right, we've got our images here and um, it seems incomplete without our little cello bag of stuff, but um, I'm just gonna kind of pop some of these um, in and attach them. Actually, I think it kind of gives a little stability to, um, to the handle to have some other images in here. So I'm just gonna kind of use my, um, my glue dots to add these to the box. And I want to try to be a little strategic with this. Let's see. I've got that tucked in and now I'm going to take the glue dot off of the, and put it on the handle where it overlaps. And Oh my gosh, I think it really just brings this whole thing to life to see some tools added. It seems crazy almost to cover up <laughs> half of the tool, but Liquid glue would be another option to add, to add these. And then there were two pencils and they were kind of 
I think our, oh, there we go. Move that brush a little bit. See, I didn't even need to make, <laughs> I didn't even need to make the pencils have erasers because it got covered up anyway. Well, the last part of this little toolbox box is the tag. And um, I think it would be nice to do this one in yellow. Um, crushed curry. <laughs> Let's see if I have... Any scraps. Here we go. And... For this one in the catalog image, they use the Happy Labels Pick a Punch. And I really love this sort of ticket, um, ticket punch here. Um, the original project, let me bring it out, had a green toolbox and a copper clay tag with a thank you. And I think I'm going to do um, mine in the, um, in, um, I just said it, <laughs> crushed curry. Oh my gosh, Julie. Uh, the Pick a Punch has three different tracks. The smallest one is a half inch, and the middle one is three quarters, and the large one is one inch. And I think we're gonna need the large size for our tag. And it fits right in the, in the track there. Let's open it up and punch one end like that, kind of cool, right? And then we're going to do some stamping and instead of embossing, I think I'm just going to use the copper clay color and we'll stamp the thank you. You know what? That was way too big. I didn't need it to be that big. <laughs> I I needed to be more more like three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna cut a new one. Oh, I love that idea, Cindy. Instead of um, instead of having a 3D toolbox, she's saying you could put it flat on a card. Absolutely, that would be totally cute. So if you don't have the need for a toolbox, you can do the same thing. Should I tear it off? No, I'm not gonna tear it off. <laughs> you could tear it off and you could put it, um, you could put it on a card and um, use it that way instead. Absolutely. All right, so three quarters of an inch is the right size for this thank you. And this is the Happy Labels Pick a Punch. And you know what? I'm actually going to just cut the other end of it and, um, and punch that too. Now the original project did kind of a different tag, um, a different tag end, um, but I, I like having both ends be that same little um, ticket, ticket side. So I'm going to put this in here and when I'm ready to package up the, um, the gift, I will have a little cello bag in there and use some linen thread to add the tag. Now, I actually know exactly who I'm gonna give this to. Um, we have someone that recently came to help us fix a hole in our ceiling um, and patch it up. We had some plumbing issues and we had to cut the ceiling in the kitchen and it, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, it was open. We had this hole in the, in the ceiling above the refrigerator for a couple months and so we finally got someone to come and help us so I'm gonna make up a little little candy treat when he comes to um, finish up and um, touch up the paint I will give him this cute little um, this cute little thank you gift box 
who might you give something like this to? And maybe if you would use something different than thank you. Uh, leave a comment and let me know. Um, I like it on the front too. That is super stinking cute. Actually, I might put it on the front. All right, this was our first project. Um, I do think absolutely that they could be pinched together at the top, Janice. I see your question about whether you could tie them together. So they are definitely um, uh, flexible enough to do that. Although I think that having a, a gift bag in the... Um, in the in the top and then tying it with something um, is a good. I just realized though this covers up all of the lines I so painstakingly drew. <laughs> um, all right, here's our first project, um, and I'm gonna leave it just like that. I think. All right, our fun toolbox, and I really love the stamped images, the way that those turned out. Uh, maybe we'll do it again here for the hammer. This is gonna be our next card, and I just love the layout of this. So this one uses the copper clay designer paper with another piece of copper clay cardstock, and then the sentiment and the die cut hammer. And so for this one, I thought it would be good to bring in some of our designer paper um, that we have. And since this one has hammers already on it, um, I thought that that might be a fun one um, to, to use. Although maybe we want to use something besides hammers um, if we want to stamp like they did here. So... Um, let me see here. Let me think. If this was nails, then that would make sense to have a hammer. But this one, this one is weird to have. Um, do we have a screwdriver in the designer paper that we can cut out? Because having a hammer with screwdrivers in the background seems like an odd choice, doesn't it? Where's the other paper here? There's a screwdriver, let's do that. Now there's not a die for the screwdriver, so I'm just gonna do a little fussy cutting here. And it's even red, I love that. So this color in the paper is actually Poppy Parade. Um, oh my goodness, Cindy. <laughs> you could totally do a little pop-up with the toolbox. Um, and just kind of push it in the sides. That sounds like um, that sounds like a really fun project. Or even those cards that have a little pop up. Um, oh my gosh! Now I'm really thinking we could go off on a tangent with toolboxes, couldn't we? <laughs> well, we talked in another video recently about a simple pop up, and um, that would be an easy way to like dress up um, one of these cards. I kind of want to take apart the box to do that, but I don't want to take apart the box. Um, maybe we'll just take off one. The uh, Well, okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't do it, don't do it. Anyway, um, the, the pop-up, remember we talked about this um, where you have... Um, Let's just fold this in half and I'll show you. Kind of a simple way to do a pop-up. So if this is if this is the inside of your card, then you can cut on the fold line, you can cut at whatever interval you like and kind of bend that. And then push this through like that. And then you could attach the toolbox to that little pop-out piece in the card, this is, <laughs> it does not make much sense the way I'm showing you, but let's say this is the toolbox here, right? Let's cut it down. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so crude. Okay, you get the picture, right? You add your toolbox in there, 
And then when you fold it, it folds closed like that. And so you can have tool, tools sticking out of it just like we do. Um, and it folds flat. So it's kind of a fun little pop-up. Okay, so I didn't do it, but you hopefully understand the way you could create a pop-up with a toolbox. And now I'm just going to have to add that to my list of things that I need to make with this bundle. <laughs> but you get the idea. You create this simple little pop-up. Um, and it can stick out as much as you want. Kind of fun. Okay. Love all the ideas, you guys. Oh, I always feel so inspired when we get together and stamp like this. Okay. We've got our, um, oh, we're going to make another red card, aren't we? <laughs> I wasn't planning to do a red card, but that is the way it's turning out to be. Well, we'll add some yellow to this one too. There's a stamp in here that has screws. And so let's do that one. Um, and that'll be kind of a fun background. And then we can also do the, um, this one says happy Father's Day, dad. So we'll add those two. And Ooh, paint pouring. That is definitely a technique that I would like to try sometime. All right, for our card, I am going to do a one, not one, four inches by five and a quarter, which is a card front size. And we're going to put this on a white card base. I have some white card bases that are prepared. And so this is going to go in the front. So we do have a white border. The original sample goes all the way to the edges, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to get out some crushed curry cardstock. And I'm going to do a little guesstimating. I'm going to guess three and a half inches across. And let's say four and a half inches. And that seems a little big, so I'm gonna do three and a quarter by four. I am liking that better. Let's go with that. Okay, next up I need to cut a piece of white for our um, Happy Father's Day Dad. And this is my process. <laughs> I'm measuring the stamp. It's two and a quarter wide, and this is two and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna go two and three quarter inches and two. Let's see how that works. We are using crushed curry cardstock ink. Well, and crushed curry cardstock. For our focal point, we're going to do, let's actually start with a happy Father's Day. This is going to be in the bottom. <laughs> Cindy, I don't mind. I love when you share ideas. Uh, sometimes I can't always run with them. Um, but it's always fun to collaborate together, isn't it? Let's do a crushed curry with the screws. And I'm gonna kind of just go all over with this, off the edges, turn them around. Oops, that was. Kind of making our own designer paper here. And I'm just doing the same thing that they did in the sample. So sort of a tone on tone. I am doing some like upside down and at a diagonal, just kind of mixing it up all across the paper. Let's see how this comes together. And then we have our, our screwdriver. Okay, the original card did have it on that side, but my, um, my happy, happy Father's Day dad, 
I think we need some red in there, don't you think, with the words? Um, so let's turn it over and let's do dad in the yellow. And then we're going to do the, um, why can I not do it straight? That's annoying. <laughs> I did it straight. I guess I just didn't, I didn't do it evenly. Let's cut a new one. One, it's two and three quarters by, what did we say, three and a half? Two and a quarter. What did we do? Two inches. <laughs> I think it was two by two and three quarters. Yeah, okay. Let's try this again. Oh, I do think that could work out. All right, well, I'll stamp it again too, just in case. Now it's like, I just have to. <laughs> Whatever, okay. Well, our red, we are using real red, even though the paper is Poppy Parade, I think it'll be okay. We've got some yellow ink and I'm just gonna clean that off before we switch to the red. Happy Father's Day. to see which one we like since we have both of them inked okay I think I like adding the red in there it's kind of a simple card but we have completely cased what was in the catalog let me bring that in and show you so here it is. We used a smaller piece of designer paper so that we have that white border. And that does kind of affect like the proportion here with the other pieces. This card used copper clay and we used the, um, the trusty toolbox designer paper and also then crushed curry cardstock. I think this is where we need to bring in some dimension. So we're gonna do some Stampin' Dimensionals under the words. And my, my instinct is to make this crooked, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it straight because that's how it is on the card. I'm gonna cover up my words. Okay, there is our version. Happy Dad's Day, Happy Father's Day. We just switched up using that designer paper. How can we not? I do like the measuring tape. I do think that looks nice and it's a bigger image um, to go under here. So um, it looks a little more filled in. Okay, two projects down. We are casing the catalog today, creating these projects here on page 56. And so the last one is going to be so fun. It is using the pegboard die, and we're gonna die cut some of these detailed images. Um, of course, with some, some silver foil. I think we've got some of that. Um, I did some die cutting ahead of time. And um, for this one, well, I was thinking we would use the designer paper, but that doesn't get to show you all of the amazing, amazing piece. Maybe we'll do a combination of both. Okay, so in the die cut set, we have this pegboard die. Um, and it is not big enough to go all the way across. So I did have to die cut it and die cut it and actually die cut three times. So my tip is when you are going to do the second die cut to line up the last row with the first row of the die 
to get even spacing all the way across. So just kind of lock that in and die cut it, if that makes sense. So you die cut one, and then that last row, you, you hook it on there and die cut again and again. And so that's how you get the nice even pegboard. So I'm using Crumb Cake cardstock, um, and this is the same color that um, they're using in the sample. And then there's also like a little ledge at the bottom and it almost looks like the little ledge uh, is 3D, um, but I'm just going to do a strip of cardstock here at the bottom and I'm getting out our foam adhesive strips, mostly because they're super skinny already and they're going to fit right into um, the spaces on the pegboard. So this comes in these long skinny strips and so for the um, piece at the bottom, I'm going to put one all the way across. And you could tear probably, but I'm going to use my scissors to cut this. And then this also can be used, and it fits so perfectly in the middle of the pegboard. So you won't be able to see that from the front. So we are going to add a top and a bottom. I'm just going to kind of make it like a box here. And so then we'll go on the sides as well. And if you wanted to, you could put some in the middle. It's probably not a bad idea to add a strip for some extra support. In the center. So our crumb cake cardstock is five and a half by eight and a half. You're gonna fold that in half. Cindy says one timer has been made a background with holes like that using a crocodile and used brads to hold the tools up on the board. That sounds like a lot of punching. I cannot even imagine what a dedicated husband to do that for you. Um, this die definitely makes it easier to do that. So my um, pegboard is a little bit smaller than the card, but it doesn't that look cool? And especially up on the foam strips, having that space between um, the card base and the pegboard. I think looks really awesome. So we're gonna add this to the card. Oh, oh, careful, I missed one. There we go. Oh, I'm trying to center. That looks good. Okay, there's the base for our card. Next, we're going to um, we're going to stamp and punch. Um, you're the most awesome. Let's do that last. Let's pick out what colors we want for our tools. So, in the sample photo, they did. Um, let's see what we have. Um, the wrench and this one this doesn't have a um, a coordinating stamp image so this is just a detail die and then oh my gosh the really cool one here is the drill the drill has some um, some fun detail to it with some extra oh this is Terry oh, there we go um, with some extra little cut details. Um, so we're gonna do this in silver and then um, this one in, um, it looks like they did two different blues. That will be fun. Um, so maybe we can do, looks like misty moonlight and starry sky, but I wanna say, let's stick with our color scheme and do, um, maybe pretty peacock and a darker, a darker blue. And then the other fun thing, the measuring tape has um, this little detail. Look at that with the ruler and it has the little lines on it. So we're gonna do um, that little detail from the yellow cardstock 
Yes, so fun. Okay. And what else do we need? There are more details. Oh, this is also for the um, for the measure tape. And I think this is the die that they used for the wheels on um, on this one here. Look at that. Isn't that fun with the Happy Father's Day? That is part of the designer paper. Um, what, oh, here's our designer paper. Um, they stamped that and made like a little Happy Father's Day. I want to just do it really quick. Let's find our cleaner. Clean. Clean our stamp. I think that looks so cool. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> um, Happy Father's Day. It'll be like this. So cool. I love that. I'm trying to think. And then they just cut it like. I could have gone down a little bit lower. Okay. I should really be using the paper trimmer. <laughs> because uh, then it would be a straight ruler instead of a crooked ruler. I love it. Okay. Sorry. Sidetrack. Let's get back on track. We are <laughs> we are going to die cut with some silver. Um and Gosh, I have all kinds of specialty paper here. <laughs> I have copper. I have gold. I don't think that we have silver on its own anymore. I think the silver is part of a... That's not silver. A brushed silver pack. Hmm. Well, one thing I know we have is The holographic paper is what I'm digging for. They always say the last one that you look at, of course, is going to be the last one because you stop looking. But that literally was the last possible <laughs> package. Um, the holographic paper has a couple different cool foils in it, including this sort of like really fun iridescent one. And then there's one that's more like of a, a shiny deep purple and then one that's kind of more of a regular silver foil. So I'm going to use that one for our our silver pieces here and for this one I am going to die cut the wrench and the drill bit and the pieces for the measuring tape and then um, we need a hammer so the hammer has um, can I fit them all on here Yes, with some strategic placement. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna do a hammer, um, a hammer with uh, different colors. So let's do, um, let's do, 
a red hammer and a what color are measuring tapes this one's going to be we're gonna do lost lagoon because it has a yellow measure tape otherwise I would want to do a yellow measure tape Just grabbing a scrap here. Unless we do a red measure tape and a blue hammer, let's do that. Okay. Red, red, red. I have a scrap, a scrap box in my right below my desk where I keep pieces of cardstock so that I don't have to cut a whole new a whole new sheet. It's pretty handy. On the other side underneath my desk I keep a plastic box where I have card bases. So if I have an extra card base, I put it there. So instead of having to cut a new piece each time, I kind of look for um, the card base on one side and the smaller scraps on the other side. Diane, does anyone else use a sticky roller thing to get pet hairs off your stamps before you stamp? That is a brilliant idea. I have two beagles in my house and um, I don't know, this winter seems to be really bad for pet hair and I just find it all over the place. I'm not sure if they're shedding more or what the deal is. Okay, using my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine to emboss our pieces. You wanna see? <laughs> you wanna see my scrap box? <laughs> um, so I don't keep, um, I don't keep a lot. I actually need some more of that, don't I, for the drill. Um, I don't keep really small scraps. Oof. Does it fit? <laughs> Let's, I'm going to move this camera up a smidge. Ready? Whoop. So I don't know how big that is. Like, but I have it organized by color and color family. Um, so I've got some regals up here and um, I don't know why I have so many of that size. Uh, and then the brights and then the subtles and then the neutrals back here. So it's kind of great and I just ruffle through and I pick up, you know, and so I don't really have a lot of this crushed curry. It was kind of buried in there, uh, but it's handy. And um, I actually have a file drawer where I keep them. And I just found that I was like not filing away my scraps. So I still have the filing cabinet, but I just don't dig into it as much as I do. Um, sorry, <laughs> we just totally, <laughs> totally scroll, scroll moment there. Um, I want to do a drill still, but let's go ahead and put together some of these pieces that we already die cut. Um, <laughs> Um, and yes, I think a lint roller is what, um, is what we're talking about for taking the lint off of things like stamps. Um, also I think sometimes ink pads, um, can have, or can get a lot of, um, lint on them. And so that's another one that, um, it's good to have, um, or to use your lint roller on. All right. We have our drill piece, but we've got to do the main part of the drill. And some of these other other things are ready. Now, in this sample, they actually, like, um, they die cut this in another color and did the center in a color. But I love it just with the metallic. So I feel like it can go straight up on there just like that. And the hammer, um, we're going to just glue that on the top. I'm laughing about the neat and tidy comment because my room right now is definitely not. 
Um, we should do a room tour sometime. That would give me an excuse to get cleaned up. Would you guys like to see a tour of my craft room sometime? Um, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I have a lot to tidy up before we can do that, but that would be fun. I think I'm going to add, um, you know what I kind of want to do? I think I'm going to do it before I stick this on. I want to stamp, um, I want to stamp the detail of the measuring tape onto the, um, the die cut image. I'm going to do it in black. And then we can add these other pieces. You don't have to use the stamp image so if you really only wanted to do the, um, the dies on this, you could create this with just die cuts. But I think adding, um, I think adding this stamp detail is kind of, um, kind of fun and really helps to bring home what this, what this is. That whole thing just flew. One of the things that they added, one of the details on the sentiment were some die cut screws, I think. Um, and maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to add that. So they had this kind of sitting on the shelf and the drill. So we need the drill and the um, You're Awesome. I'm so afraid about losing some things. Hold on, I gotta bring in this bowl for my dies. I have a little magnetic bowl. Um, I think I have a bigger one somewhere too. And, oh, okay. Um, so this is what we need to die cut next. And then we're also gonna stamp the You're Awesome which is over here. What color should we make? You're awesome. Uh, what color did we decide to do the drill? You know what, actually, I'm gonna, let's cheat on the drill. <laughs> let's find a drill to fussy cut from our paper and shortcut this card. I might have to get a bigger piece of the designer paper. Okay, do we want the yellow and, um, is this going to fit over the top? Oh, yes, it is. Do we want um, the yellow and Lost Lagoon or Lost Lagoon in red? I think the yellow and Lost Lagoon. Okay, we're going to fussy cut this. The original did have the detailed die cuts. We'll still add a foil on top. Oh, that was rougher on the edges, Julie. Now I gotta go close. I'm cutting because we have the die cut to add, so it'll be okay. Of course, all the tools can be from the paper. You don't have to use the dies at all. And technically, you could do the same look of this card completely with the designer paper. If you use the copper clay designer piece that looks like pegboard, so you could kind of create the same look. It's sort of like what I did on this box by adding the different tools from the paper. Okay. That does coordinate. 
but it would cut, would it cut those pieces? No, it would just cut lines and add some detail. Okay, I'm gonna leave it though. <laughs> I'm getting distracted and making such a mess. Let's go ahead and glue this on. All right, now we have to decide if we want our, um, what color we want our greeting to be. And I'm kind of thinking definitely red with everything else that's going on. So let's get out our red, our red ink. Don't wanna lose that. Oh, I just love that happy Father's Day. And, oops, that's already taken. Let's get some new paper out. I just tore that and now it's not gonna work. Okay. Did I put the stamp on a block? Where did I put it? There it is. I think it'll be fun to use that punch that we used on the first project. The Happy Labels Pick a Punch. I like that edge, the edge on that. For this one, we're definitely going to need the one inch. Is this long enough? I might need to make it. Oh, no, it's perfect. Okay. Hmm. It seems like it's bigger than one inch. Sure is. I thought I, I thought I cut correctly the first time. There we go. It slides right in. Punch one side. And the other. You're the most awesome. I kind of wish that the um, that I'd stamped the detail on the hammer. Let's see, where's the hammer stamp? Did I get it out? Of course, it, no, I didn't. It's like the one stamp we haven't used yet. <laughs> Let's try stamping on this. Hopefully, I won't ruin it. I don't think I've asked this yet, and you guys have been so patient watching me, but yay or nay, do you like the trusty tools and the trusty toolbox? Are you a fan? Oh, I thought that was gonna happen. And I also thought I might be able to just blot off, <laughs> blot it right off. Um, if you want it to stick to the holographic paper, the foil paper, you're gonna to wanna to either use the stays on black ink or do some embossing with black. So if you emboss with black, it'll stick to the foil. So I would love to have some of that detail from the hammer be on the foil, but um, I am okay with just having it on the handle. It's better than nothing. All right, this card is so fun. It's time to add everything on. And we already have a lot going on um, with dimension. So I'm going to put everything on. Actually, 
I'm gonna do the sentiment with dimensionals that are thinner. These are so much thinner than the, um, the foam strips. And, and the other things, you know what, they're gonna go on with dimensionals too. <laughs> um, they're pretty thin, the dimensionals are, and it is kind of a thick card, so it might need some extra postage with those foam strips, but. Um, I think that it, it sits up nicely to use the, um, oh, these just don't fit as, as well. I think that works. One of the things I love, I see your comment, Debbie, about um, only getting the DSP. I love that we have that option for kind of things that are very specific like this. Um, if you don't, you know, have somebody that you would give these you know, a tool card too. It's nice to have the option to get the designer paper for free during celebration and not have to get the um, the bundle and the dies. You can make some pretty amazing cards. In fact, I think you could do very similar things to what we did today using just the, um, just the designer paper, which again, you can get for free during celebration. I'm trying to scoot some of my stuff out of the way. I've made such a mess here. <laughs> here is our finished card. Let me show you the sample in the catalog again. So we made some changes, especially substituting the designer paper, but you can see the original here had a little piece of cardstock in the middle, and I definitely like that to be all foil um, for that wrench. I would love to add some detail here, maybe embossing or using the stays on ink um, on to the metal hammer, but I think it looks fine the way it is. And then I'm loving that we decided to do the designer paper for this piece, because I think all the lined details really add to the card and kind of pull it all together. So in today's video, we were casing the catalog on page 56 using the trusty tools um, stamp set. And we used almost every single stamp. The only one we didn't use was the detailed stamp that goes on to um, the, the measuring tape. But let's take a look at all the projects that we made again. Um, we created some clean and simple cards, this one here, and then we also did a lot more detail with the dies. We also made a fun little box, and we got those measurements from the, um, the project supply list. So again, if you haven't checked that out, if you're looking for some details on how to make some of the projects in the catalog, check out that project supply list. I've got a link to it in the video description um, and you can download it to get all the details on all of the projects. There's a couple hundred projects in the mini catalog. There's also a project supply list for the celebration brochure. So I'll have to get that um, out and um, share that as well. I'm looking for all the different designs here and I'm missing one. There we go. Trusty toolbox and trusty tools. I'm gonna bring in a couple swaps to close out the video and share just a few more ideas with this fun, um, fun bundle and designer paper combo set. First of all, I shared that um, gift box that I made and then the cute little mini gift box. And here are some of the swaps. Um, this first one is from Amy Combs and she used lots of the designer paper, including die cut images. I love that. She added a few of the cork embellishments. I think that's such a great um, embellishment to coordinate with this bundle. Then we've got this card from Kathy Gruby, and I noticed tonight that she cased the celebration brochure. So looking at um, the celebration brochure where the design 
paper ears. Here is her inspiration card. So she changed up the colors a little bit, added that um, wood grain embossing folder. I love that addition. Such a great, um, such a great idea. And then the last card um, is from Rachel Chamberlain, and she used that fun ruler paper and some of the die cut images. The dad, you're the best sentiment comes from the heartfelt hellos, another celebration gift option that you can get um, during celebration, which ends February 29th. So we have just one more month to celebrate. So make sure you get all of your favorites, including the new more to celebrate gift options available starting today. Um, new gift options. So check out the online store at juliedavison.com. Uh, slash shop um, to shop with me. The February host code is in the video description um, and you can earn a free project kit when you order $40 or more from my online store. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed tonight's projects. Let me know which one of these projects you are most inspired by. Are you going to try that 3D toolbox or maybe the detailed die cut pegboard or keeping it clean and simple? Um, I hope that even if you don't have the trusty tools or the trusty toolbox designer paper that you feel inspired either to case the catalog or to create a project using a similar layout. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thumbs up, please. Helps on my channel out and make sure that you subscribe um, so you don't miss out on future card making videos like this Sunday. Mom and I will be sharing projects with the Jungle Pals stamp set and dies, which is another celebration gift option. And of course, Thursday night stamp therapy, which happens every Thursday night at 7 15 p.m. Central Time. Thanks again for tuning in. You guys are so fabulous and I enjoyed chatting with you. Have a great night and I'll see you next time. Bye.